Hey, thanks for taking a moment. I hope you're enjoying tonight. I wanted to give you a little view of where I'm at. The camera will probably focus back in just a second. But this is called Kennedy Point Park, where I'm at tonight. And we're going to talk about looking up when you're feeling down. Looking up when you're feeling down. And that's going to be our message for tonight. You might want to open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 13 or Genesis chapter 15, because we're going to talk about those two passages. And what we're going to talk about is the story of Abram and how Abram was the one who, um, he had plenty of situations in life to be discouraged, and yet uh, he was able to look up when he was feeling down. Here's, here's kind of the theme for tonight, okay? Life can be difficult, life can be discouraging, and life can be depressing. But God helps us to look up when we're feeling down, when uh, by he, he gives us, excuse me, God helps us to look up when we're feeling down by giving us hope and a future. So we're going to look at three things tonight. One's kind of the negative, and then two are how God helps us to get through that. And so if you're feeling discouraged or you have a friend who's feeling discouraged, this might be a message that you want to use for them to show them how even thousands of years ago, how God um, has a way of helping us to look up, look around us while we're feeling down. And where I'm at is one of my favorite places to look around. Now, there was a guy who, uh, the reason you're holding a Hershey's chocolate tonight, hopefully you are, or you ate it, uh, is that... There was a guy named Milton Hershey. And Milton Hershey, when he first started out, his family, as a child, his parents struggled. When he was about 14, his father took off. And his parents separated and, I guess, divorced. And at 14, he had to start, his mom needed him to start helping with the family, helping to uh, contribute to the family. So he got a job in a printing press. And... Um, he was actually, the inventor of Hershey chocolate, was actually fired from his first job because he was so clumsy that he actually dropped his hat, his straw hat, into the printing press and was fired. Well, later on, because of that, he ended up getting a job uh, uh, working with candies. And he learned a lot from that job. He ended up just a few years later starting several businesses that failed. His first one, actually, he borrowed money from family members and everything, a substantial amount. He was going to go to Chicago for the World's Fair and actually ended up going bankrupt there. Later, he actually went to uh, Denver, New York, and even New Orleans, and went broke everywhere he went. He could not make it in the candy business. So finally defeated, he came back to Lancaster, and uh, uh, he didn't even have money to ship his clothes back. <laughs> and so he came back to Lancaster, and he went to his uncle's house, and he asked his uncle to take care of him or to house him and to let him work. And his uncle looked at him, told him he was a drifter, and his family, his own family, said they didn't want him. The good news is one of his old friends had pity on him, one of his friends that he had worked with. And so he actually helped him to get his stuff shipped back home, gave him the money to start up another <laughs> at 40 years old, another chocolate company, which he started. Uh, uh, his mom then came back and began to help. And he started a company which later became Hershey's Chocolate. And the reason you have Hershey's Kisses today is because he never gave up, even at 40 years of age, even after being rejected from his family, even after failing in business three times, um, he continued to say, you know, I have a vision. I have a dream for what should happen. And as a Christian, he felt very simply that um, he wanted to live by the golden rule, do unto others as he would have them do unto them. And after he got married, he didn't have any kids, he actually uh, began giving money away. His wife was a philanthropist. She loved giving money away. And so he started a school. He started uh, all kind of things in the town that became known as Hershey, Pennsylvania. And I don't know if any of you have been there. But Hershey, Pennsylvania always went out of their way uh, to help people, and he went out of his way. And if you read his, bibli his biography about his life, they will say Hershey was a chocolatier and a philanthropist. And that's what's known about him, this guy who started out as a failure, but he never quit. So here's three things we're going to look at from the story of Abram, who later became Abraham. First of all, circumstances can lead to discouragement. Listen, life can be discouraging. I don't know what you're going through right now. But the Bible even says not to consider it strange, the trials that you and I go through. Life is difficult. Life is hard. This side of heaven, there are challenges. There's discouragement. People hurt us. Sometimes we hurt ourselves. 
Uh, sometimes in life, because there's sin in the world, um, there is cancer, there, is, there are diseases, there's sickness. We don't always take care of ourselves. Uh, sometimes that's our fault. And, um, and yet, when we look at our circumstances, it's easy to get discouraged. So let's pick up the story of Lot and Abram and see what happened as they had left Egypt. The, the cattle had multiplied. Things were going well, but then they suddenly began not going well. And here's what happens in verse chapter seven, uh, verse seven of chapter 13. And quarreling arose between Abram's herders and Lot's. The Canaanites and the Perizzites were also living in the land at that time. So Lot chose for himself the whole plain, a few verses later, plain of the Jordan and set out towards the east. The two men parted company. Abram lived in the land of Canaan while Lot lived among the cities of the plain and pitched his tent near Sodom. Now I'm going to start the car because I'm getting hot. <laughs> Now, here's what happened in this story. They were getting along. Things were going well. But actually what began happening is there was not enough resources because they had so much. They had so many sheep. They had so many cattle. They had so many provisions that, that the herdsmen, they began to argue with each other. So Abram said, you know, instead of us being a bad example to these other groups, the Canaanites and these other folks, let's go ahead and just you choose where you want to go. Now that's interesting because Abram was his uncle. He was the oil elder. He should have said, I'm going here, you're going there. And of course, Lot looked around and he, you know, you ever hear the grass is greener on the other side? Well, that's what Lot saw. Near Sodom were the best fields. The, the well-watered field, fields is how it says somewhere else. And so what did he do? He went off and settled near Sodom where there were the best fields, the best grass, the best place. And here he left Abram right where he was. Now, I'm sure that had to be discouraging. They had gone through a quarrel. They had gone through a fight. Their circumstances were bad. And then here's Abram left with the worst land. I, I, I can't imagine that Abram didn't go, why didn't I take the best land? But yet the reason he didn't is because he trusted God. The, uh, the Jewish people actually say that Abram was so righteous that he knew that no matter where he went, that God was going to bless him. And I don't know whether that part's true or not, but I know that he did trust God. But I know there had to also be times where he said, you know, I'm tired of us fighting. That can't be a joyous time. If Abram had only looked at his circumstances, he would have been discouraged. You ever get discouraged just because you're looking at your circumstances? You ever focus on just what's going on? Lot chose the land he wanted by sight. We can choose to walk in faith with God, or we can choose to live in our circumstances and live by sight. There's another story a few verses later, chapters later, in chapter 15, where God talks about how he's going to bless Abraham. And here's what it says in Genesis 15. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, Solemn, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You've given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. When Abram heard God, God said, Abram, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you all of this. Don't be afraid. I'm your shield. I'm your reward. All Abram could think of is, first of all, the mistake that he had made in the past, where he had listened to bad advice and had, had, uh, had a child out of wedlock. And he says, God, how are you going to bless me? Look at what I did. I, number one, I don't have a future heir out of my family, but yet, you know, I have one from this way. And, and all he could think of was the mistakes he made in the past. You ever find yourself doing that? Because of where you're at now, you say, look at what I did, God. How can you bless me now? And yet God says, I'm your shield. I'm going to protect you even from the stupidity. You know, grace is all about God giving us what we don't deserve. <laughs> grace is about God saying, you know what? I know you blew it. I know you messed up. And yet I'm going to bless you anyway. It's easy to focus on today's pain. It's easy to focus on today's struggle and forget, you know what, God? You're our shield. You're our reward. Life is hard, but here's the deal. No one tonight is forcing you to think about your past. <laughs> There's probably, you may have some family members, you may even have some friends who remind you, you know what you did back then? You know what you did last summer? <laughs> you know what you did? We, we know what, what your life is like, but let me tell you something. In your mind right now, no one is forcing you to think of your mistakes. 
And no one's forcing you to think of your bad circumstances and the things that have happened. And listen, it's okay to fail. It's okay to fail sometimes. Things happen. Hershey failed for a long time. Things went wrong. He had bankruptcies and, and life did not go well. It's okay to fail. But let me tell you something. It's never okay to give up. And I want you to know this too about depression. Um, depression happens in people's lives and it's not okay to give up. It's okay to fail. But go and get help. You know, in our family, my father ended his own life because he became depressed and he focused on circumstances and he focused on what was going on, his emotions and everything else. We don't know all the answers and he chose to give up. Listen, instead of choosing to give up, choose to get some help. Choose to go out of your way to get someone to help you to maybe even say, God, I need your help and start there and then go out of your way to get help from others. Listen to what Corey Ten Boone said. I love this. If you look at the world, you'll be distressed. If you look within, you'll be depressed. But if you look at Christ, you'll be at rest. Number two, here's the second thing. God reminds us to look up. That whole idea of don't give up, don't give up, get help. The whole idea of don't give up. It's okay to fail, but it's not okay to quit. God reminds you to look up. One of the reasons I love to come here to Kennedy Point is I take some time just to look up, to look at all the blessings. I mean, look out here. We've got a boat sitting here. There's some guys sitting here eating lunch next to me, uh, wondering why I'm talking to myself. There, There is the Space Center out here where someone had a dream of what we could do, and then people together uh, with I believe with God's help, we're able to accomplish the dream of going to space. And, you know, they look towards the future. God says, look up, look at what you have. So here's what happens. The Lord said to Abram in verse 14, in chapter 13, the Lord said to Abram after Lot had parted from him, look around you from where you are. Look to the north and to the south. Look to the east and to the west. All the land that you see, I'll give you and your offspring forever. I'll make your offspring like the dust of the earth so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go walk through the length and breadth of the land for I am giving it to you. God really gave him four things to help him to look up. Number one, he said, look up <laughs> to raise your head. Did you know they've done studies that actually just sitting up and smiling or even just sitting up and taking a breath can improve your attitude? So often we get our head down, we forget to look up, we begin to look down and don't pay attention to anything or anyone around us, that we have to take time to actually look up. The first thing he said to him is, look up, look around you, look to the north, the south, the east, and the west. I'm going to give you everything you see. The second thing is he wanted him to get a vision for others. He said, look and give he said, I will give land to you and your offspring. So God is going to give to you. So look around and know that God is going to give. Jesus said he's going to provide for you. Uh, you don't have to worry because he is the one that's going to provide for you. Number three, God told him, he showed him to dream. He said, you're going to have too many offspring to count. Have you lost your vision? Have you lost your vision for what God wants to do in you? Maybe it's time to ask God, God, give me a new vision. And finally, he said, take a walk. Walk around and claim all this. Listen, this is where we get the idea for prayer walks, where we walk around our neighborhood. Have you walked through your community and prayed for your neighbors? I do that all the time. I love, I take about a three mile walk uh, uh, four times or five times a week, except when it's raining a lot. Uh, and I, one of the things I love to do is pray for different people in different homes. And especially we have several people on that walk from the church. And I pray over their homes and I ask God to bless them. When's the last time you took a prayer walk to go out of your way to bless someone else to get a vision? So take time to look, to give give, to dream, and to walk. That's what God told Abram to do. And then we go to the other story in Genesis chapter 15. The word of the Lord came to him. Remember, he had told him, I'm going to give you a heritage. And Abram said, but how? God, I'm a failure. I don't, even, I don't have anything you've told me, and yet you say you want to bless me. Then the word of the Lord came to him. This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. And then listen to what happened. God took him outside and said, look up. There we go again. Look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. Here's the big thing that happened there. God told him to look up, to look around, to see what's around him, which we all need to do when we get discouraged. Take time to look up. But then it says, he believed the Lord. Do you believe the Lord? 
Do you believe that God has his best in mind for you? Even when you go through trial, are you able to say, God, I don't understand you, but I trust you. Abraham was able to say, as Abram, he was able to say, God, I don't understand. I don't know how this is going to work. I'm a failure. I've messed up. I've done some dumb stuff. But you know what? I'm going to believe you. And the Bible says that God credited it to him as righteousness. And the birds agree. I don't know if you can hear them, but they are chirping. Number three, not only uh, is life discouraging and life's tough, God wants us to look up. But number three, God gives us hope for the future. A few years after Hershey um, uh, was married, he married a wife who was a philanthropist. And they had tickets, first class tickets, on the Titanic. And his business held him up, and he had to end up buying tickets for a later date because his business and then his wife was sick, held him up, and he was not able to go on the Titanic. I'm sure in the situation he was in, his family was disappointed. The Titanic was supposed to be the most amazing ship. And yet if he had had tickets on the Titanic, he would have never made it home. God knows your future. He knows what's going to happen in your future. And he says he has the best for your future. So even when today it seems like what happens is a failure, when that check is sent back, when things don't go the way you want it to, God says, I have hope for your future. In Genesis 15, it says, When the sun had set and darkness had fallen, a smoking fire pot with a blazing torch appeared and passed between two pieces. Basically, Abram saw a vision of what God was going to do. And on that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham or Abram and said, To your descendants I give the land from the wadi of Egypt to the great river of the Euphrates. God came to him and said, I'm going to answer your prayer. You know, one of the prayers God answers for you and for me is, God, Would you give me a vision for the future you have for me? When's the last time, instead of looking at your circumstances, when's the last time, instead of looking what was wrong in your life, you said, God, would you give me a vision of how you want to use me? See, God gave Abraham a vision of how he was going to bless his family. It wasn't too many years later that Hershey's wife passed away. And Hershey could have gone into depression. He could have just quit. But three years after his wife died, you know what he did? He gave the majority of his money away. He even was able to, during the Great Depression, no one in Hershey, Pennsylvania, lost their jobs because Hershey had building programs and everything that he paid for himself. And then he ended up giving the majority of his money away to the school and other organizations. To this day, there are monies given away because of the investment Hershey made all those years ago and the agreement to look beyond himself and to give that away. He had a vision, I believe, from God for the future of how his legacy would live on and bless other people for generation after generation. Even though he's been gone since the 40s, he's been able to bless uh, many, many students through a hospital, uh, uh, through an academy in that town, and all kind of other scholarships because of what Hershey did. Listen to what God says to us, and I believe this is for us from Jeremiah chapter 29. For I know how the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Do you believe that? It's easy to get focused on what we don't have. It's easy to get focused on our circumstances. I went to a boys and girls club meeting just on Friday morning. And there was a girl who got up. And when she was about six years old, her mom was her world. And her mom got cancer and died. And she ended up going. And her father wasn't in the picture. And she ended up going and moving in with her grandmother. Well, her grandmother saw the boys and girls club and realized that she needed to get her granddaughter around other kids and around other adults who were a little bit younger who could encourage her and tutor her and she got her in the boys and girls club this young lady shared how this year as a senior in high school she carried a 4.05 average and she just finished her aa from what we used to call bcc which is the uh the eastern florida college now. (laughs) But she's able to get her degree and she's the first one in her family that's going to finish her four-year degree from college. Other kids talked about how uh, uh, one of the children that was part of the Boys and Girls Club came to the Boys and Girls Club and had already picked out their corner where they were going to sell drugs. And this year they're going to be graduating from high school. Even though they had a vision 
uh, that was wrong. They were able to get a new vision from someone who loved them and cared about them and saw that God had something more for their future. Do you realize God has better things for your future than what you see now? Don't get focused on your circumstances. Life can be difficult. Life can be discouraging. It can be downright depressing. But I want you to know, no matter where you're at, that God is going to help you to look up when you're down. He's going to give you hope for the future. Ask him, God, would you give me a vision for what you want me to do? If you're here tonight and you've never received Christ, we've got some men who'd be glad, to, and women, who'd be glad to talk to you about what it means to be a Christian. If you're watching online, I'd be glad. You could send me a note. I'd love to talk to you about the idea of, Jesus, you died for my sins. I want to surrender my life to you and talk to you about what it means to be a Christian. You might be here tonight, and the truth is you've become discouraged I want you to know I'm praying for you. You can send me an email. I'd love to pray for you. Don't give up. Failure is normal in life, but you don't have to give up. And God has hope for you for your future. Thanks for watching tonight. We're going to have some music, our time of giving. Listen, you, our church has always given faithfully. I want to encourage you to give faithfully. Maybe you give your time, but I want to encourage you to begin to look at how you can give financially. Maybe if you're watching online, you watch all the time, but you've never supported our church to help other people. So I want to encourage you, go out of your way. One of the ways to get vision for your life is to give to others, not just through your time, but also through your other resources. If you have money uh, to have entertainment, then you have money to invest in the kingdom. So I encourage you, invest in his kingdom, a percentage of your giving uh, uh, every month to look at how you go out of your way to give. Thanks for watching, and thanks for watching tonight. Here comes the team. Thanks.